Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, no matter where in the world you <laughs> might be. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. What, what's so funny, so? I had a really good intro. <laughs> Do you have hay fever? <laughs> Sorry? No, I just yeah. blew my nose. That's all. I did hear burp. It was <laughs> flipping up. Ah, the timing was absolute gold. Uh, I don't, I don't suffer. I don't suffer hay fever. Thank God. Oh, gosh. The timing was absolute gold. Welcome, everybody, especially my podcast br brother from another <laughs> sniffy. <laughs> <laughs> Squaddies at ease. Let's do this. I ain't got time to mess about with you lot tonight. No, at ease. We certainly don't. Uh, before we move forward, super care of everyone who's listening on audio, iTunes, Spotify, Acast. Thanks so much for joining us and to all those listening on replay. We do realize it is the summer. That's why Hybrid Squad On Demand is so wonderful. You can watch the episodes at your leisure, no matter where in the world and whatever time in the world it might be. Super Kev, who knew? By the way, Father's Day, good day. Yeah? Great day. Yep. Great day. Great day. For all the fathers, obviously, that are here doing a doing a good job and who are no longer with us. You know, they're, they're still with us in their all their memories. So great day. Abs absolutely, super Kev. Okay. Um, good evening to all the usual suspects in how in uh, in the house. Our chief like officer, of course, Tammy Steele. Keep your eye on the numbers. Um, it doesn't do you any harm to hit the like button. It helps us. Some housekeeping. You can now see um, in the descriptions of our shows our merchandise store, uh, which is going to be up. Um, up, uh, up, uplifted. It's more's going to be added to it next season as well. But there's the Brock the Net collection, um, there's the Sophie, Sophie, Sophie collection, and of course, um, whatever we sell, a bunch of our proceeds go to Gunas versus Cancer. They're doing a final push on that, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that later on in the show. And I've just been delivered a French fry. Thank you very oh, nice. much, Tony. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Can't be bad, eh, bloody hell, I'll tell you what. I mean, seriously, that's special. Um, I haven't... I can't eat in Kev. I don't know what it is. Usually when the heat comes, I stop eating. But ever since I've been to Europe, um, and especially Cyprus, I'm an eating machine. Good. And it's, well, Good. not really when I'm not really exercising as much other than walking Vinny Good. and Vespa. Your body will tell you what it needs. Right. Okay. Roger that. I take it from you. All right. So um, there's that part. Tomorrow, we will be premiering a very special episode of the summer series meets inside with the inside the dressing room with Super Kev, Callum Chambers and LA Galaxy goalkeeper Jonathan Bond. A lot of you will not know Jonathan, but I think you'll like him a lot mm -hmm. after this interview. And Kev, it was lovely sitting down with Callum and having a chat about hit, uh, a chat with him, who, by the way, showed up when it was midnight in Portugal. Yeah, to be fair to to both of the lads, it was a really, really good good uh, show, and I'm sure everybody's gonna love it because two really nice lads, so two really, really nice lads, and uh, yeah. it comes across in the recordings, I'm sure. Definitely, and we did get to sneak in a couple of Arsenal questions and. Whether or not I came clean to Callum on criticism, you'll have to tune in and find out. That's for sure. Right. Let's get stuck into the news of the day, um, which was the news of the weekend. Who knew, Kev? A number. You know, this is my dad. His roulette numbers are 4, 14 and 24. Four is very big in the Nicolau household with the Manchester United supporting side of the family. Me, I'm a three. I love threes. 
I love three. I love 33. Don't like 13, though, very much. Spin it around 31, not a bad number. Super Kev, I'd like to start with you first, and I'd like to put this comment up um, right here. Where is it, if I can find it, um, from one of our listeners? I will find it in the meantime. But this whole eruption of emotion over Eddie signing, fans disagreeing, I kind of stayed off twi- the Twitter sphere this weekend, to be honest with you, Kev. Gabrielle getting involved, Wrighty getting involved, and we'll get to what we think about that in just a second. But what are your initial thoughts about this? Uh, my initial thoughts are, if you remember, the same thing happened last summer when Emil Smith-Rowe signed. When Emil Smith-Rowe signed, he got the number 10 shirt. And do you remember there was people, maybe not as much, not as vocal, but people mm-hmm. saying... That shirt, you know, Burkamp wore that shirt. You know, he's got to, he's got to earn it. Well, the lad it double figures, etc. And I'm not saying, you know, Eddie is um, going to be hitting double figures or whatever. I don't know, but I think the club have gone down the route of connecting those legends with Halen. Saka's got seven. Smith Rowe's got ten. Eddie and Ketchy's got fourteen now. So. I think the club, the club cannot afford to be a fan. They can't afford to be a fan. They've got to, they've got to move this thing on as quickly as they can. But do and you think they've acted like a fan then? Of course they haven't. So you don't think giving Saka seven and Emil Smith Rowe ten and Eddie fourteen is an acting like a fan? No, I, I, I've just or explained nostalgic. that. Or nostalgic. No, I've just explained that. I think that for the club, it's important to connect everything back to Hale End. Like I'm saying, Saka's got seven. Smith Rowe's got 10. And Ketcher's got 14. Now, you could argue fans, fans sometimes have so much more a buy into numbers because a lot of their favorite players wore a certain number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sophie, I get that. When I went to Everton, it was the number nine shirt at Everton. He's the one. But as I say, the club cannot be a fan. They can't think like a fan. They have to move this thing on. So that's what they've done. And listen, again, it's a game of opinion, Sophie. Some don't like it. But you know one thing I, I, I disagree with, Sophie? Is, is, is the vitriol and the nastiness. Fair enough, you could have your opinion, but when it gets personal and nasty, there's no room for that. No chance. Yeah, we've never endorsed that on our show, of course, but we have always on our show endorsed having your opinion and being able to express your opinion, whether you agree with it, whether somebody else agrees with it or not. We would not have moved forward in this world and in this life without people with you know differing views and trying somehow to come in the middle to find common ground. And it feels like right now Arsenal fans cannot find common ground, um, Super Kev. And... Uh, I just want to throw these things at you. So I get what you're saying about the the club can't be fans, but I want to spin this back around to you again because I hear what you're saying in the sense that the players who've come before them, the nostalgia of the number seven shirt, the number 10 shirt, and of course today I was going to pay homage to probably, for me, one of the greatest ever who's won the number 10 shirt in 1995, Think about that and how long ago that was, you guys. This fella signed for the Arsenal Football Club, became an absolute legend, was having a torrid time at Inter Milan and came and won and conquered and did special things that, in my opinion, have made him the greatest Dutch player to ever play in the Premier League. Just sublime, absolute gorgeous memories and incredible stuff. So... Wanting to move on from an era that has so dominated our history, Kev, the mm. shifting gears of it's all good to look in the rearview mirror, mirror and be nostalgic, but we can't live there is kind of what you're saying. And I think we've been stuck with these memories for a long time, albeit great memories, Thierry 14, Dennis 10, 
you know, you've got Robert Perez, you've got, you know, all of these different players who have come in that number four shirt, Vieira. Now who wears that? There's always, a, there's always something attached to it. In yeah. America, they retire those jerseys. So no one can wear them again, which is probably a good idea. But, would you also say that then is it fair for our, some Arsenal fans who feel like they're being marketed to perhaps? Saka deserves the number seven shirt. Emil Smith Rowe deserves the number 10 shirt. Does no, Eddie Nketiah deserve the 14? Summer. But that's the whole point. Last summer, when Smith Rowe signed his new contract and he, he, he paraded the number 10, the fan base didn't say he deserved it. That's what they were saying. This is my whole point. They're not saying that he deserved it. They were just saying that's Dennis Burkamp shirt and a more experienced player should be should be in the number 10 shirt. So again, this is a year on where Smith Rowe probably he, he had a great season without being spectacular because he hit double figures in goals. Fantastic. But Eddie Nketiah was on his way out of the club for sure. Obviously, signs a new contract and gets the number 14. I, I get all the connection and the feeling to that number 14 shirt, just like the number 10 shirt. But unfortunately, whether your opinion is one way or the other, it's the club who decide who gets what shirt. Kev, is it fair to say Walcott not so much, even though I do think there's a disrespect towards Walcott when you look at how many games he played and how many goals he scored, you guys should kind of maybe one day look into the chapter that is um, Theo Walcott of the Arsenal era towards the end of um, Wenger and the protege signings that he had made, Kev, I think. People don't respect what he did enough. But of course, how can you when this guy was the one that the, the wore the 14? Would you would you say it's fair for me then to suggest that the reason why some Arsenal fans would be upset is because if Gabriel Jesus is coming, he should be the marquee man with the 14 shirt. It, it, when Obama Yang came, that was someone that fans felt would step into that limelight and soak it up which he did in the early part of his career and delivered an FA Cup. Do you think it's fair for the fact that some Arsenal fans maybe just think he hasn't earned it and it sends a message about what might be happening in the transfer window? Sends a message what might be happening in the transfer window? How? Yeah, for example, Jesus, when Aubameyang came, he gets the 14 shirt. It's the marquee signing. You know, moving no, but, Smith not, but 14 necessarily the marquee signing and well at Arsenal it is isn't it but, but 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 if you're a player the player might not want 14 he might want number nine but at See? Arsenal number 14 no, 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 is no, the Sophie, number you ask me the question and I'm gonna answer it the marquee number at Arsenal is 14 but if the player coming in doesn't want 14 he wants it he wants number nine because he's the main man as, as a striker he gets number nine. So you're saying that part of Jesus's dealings would be, I want the number nine. I don't want the number 14. No, I'm, I'm just saying. Jesus might, uh, speaking to Jesus, they might, have, they might have said, right, you get the number 14 shirt. Might have. He might say, oh, I want number nine. <laughs> so let, can I, can we quickly before we get to kind of the positive side of things and I feel like this is still a positive conversation about negative things in that it is what, positive it is positive what, because what, we're what, dealing with it yeah, yeah what do you say Kev by the way 265 of you in live chat right now please do hit that like button if you're enjoying this fine summer Monday conversation with super Kevin Campbell in the house what do you say to the fans you see them on Twitter I like to maybe call them gaslighters. So they position a point of view, acting as though that point of view is a solution, whereas really they're laying the blame on others. I feel like there's a lot of people who have a platform who talk a really good game, but are doing exactly what they accuse other people of, Kev. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, they're, they're turning the Bunsen burners on, aren't they? That's what they're doing. And then anybody wants to smoke, all of a sudden it, it, it ignites. 100%. I, listen, Sophie, I get all that. That's all part of social media. Whether we like it or not, 
for the good things, it can work for you. And sometimes it can work against you. And on this particular thing, it sometimes can work against you because there's a lot more heat and a lot more fire when really there shouldn't be. Opinion, I get it. You know, I've, I've often said, Eddie's not the answer. Fact of the matter is, manager likes him. Manager wants to sign him. I understand going out and signing somebody else will cost us a lot more money. I get all that, Sophie. The fact of the matter is, giving him a, 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 the number 14 shirt is going to be controversial. It is going to be controversial. Just because of, I mean, Thierry Henry. Now, here's, here's the funnier thing, Soph. Why isn't the number eight like that? <laughs> Do you, understand? you see where I'm going with this? You know, Ian Wright was just as iconic across, uh, across a, a, a big stretch of time. But the number eight isn't seen as that same as the number 14. And maybe because obviously Thierry Henry, what Thierry Henry done and became the high scorer, et cetera, et cetera. I get all that. But if we're... How do you differentiate, is my point, So, How do you differentiate 10, 14, 7, 8, 4, Tony Adams, number six. Why isn't there a big hullabaloo about number six? So how do you? I think I think it's crazy that I would like to have this debate after, say, the first two months of the season. And if Eddie is part and will be, he's going to be part of that core squad. If he's not delivering, then we can have this debate where we criticize him. You're talking about a kid who grew up in the Arsenal system. I'm not a fan. I've been very vocal on this show about, and you know what? Be careful when you do that because it comes back to haunt you when you interview ex-players like Callum Chambers. It haunts you in a good way and a bad way. You can only be honest. Kev and I have said on this show, and Kev, I hope you don't mind me throwing you in, that long-term, as a prolific striker, it would be our choice that Eddie wasn't that guy. But that doesn't mean that he can't be part of a squad, which yeah. clearly he does well in, in the domestic As cups. a starter, as a starter, as we said, I've said it many a time, Eddie is not the answer. Right. So I th I also do, you know, there's, there's kind of Arsenal are damned if they do and damned if they don't sometimes. The same way as if, You've been critical of Arteta, but then praise him when he wins. You, there's no in-between anymore. But can't people just take a minute and say, okay, this is a kid who's fulfilling a dream. Yes, he taunted the club about getting a new deal. You know what he did? He played his cards right, and so did his agent. They were looking out for him and his family. And that is what it's all about at the end of the day, as well as where it's your, in your best interest to play football. Arteta believed in him. There's a reason he's getting the number 14 shirt. If you think that this puts Eddie under pressure, in my opinion, Kev, this puts Mikel under an intense amount of pressure because he's saying, I stopped the guy from leaving. I convinced him to stay. He's my guy. I believe in him. And you know what? I'm also doubling down and giving him the number 14 shirt here. And this is a kid who's played in and come through Hayland. So he's fulfilling a dream. And the day that dream comes true, a large portion of the fan base just shit on it because he was given Thierry Henry's number shirt. Well, you know what? Arsenal fans were a bit bitchy towards Thierry Henry when he came in and didn't settle. They were a bit bitchy to Dennis Burkamp, Robert Perez. What did Kevin and I say last summer when we signed Ramsdale and Tommy Asu and Ben White? Just let them have a moment and a chance. So what happened was a moment was taken away from a player who should be celebrating his achievement. Whether you agree or disagree, if he's the guy up top, this is his moment. And Kev, I would, I, I'm all for Eddie coming out. But I wanted to get your take on Gabriel and Wrighty getting involved because I know that you are very, you get involved in things, but it's, I don't know. I don't know if that was the right move. What do you think? 
Listen, everyone, again, just like an opinion, Soph, if somebody feels it's the right thing to do, that's what they're going to do. But let me tell you, let me tell you this, Sophie. When a player, an ex-player is, is one thing, right? He's coming out and, and saying he's one thing. But when an actual player in the team comes out and, 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 and backs, his, backs, backs the move and can't believe the vitriol, we're in a bad place, I'm telling you. Because how do you reckon Gabriel's feeling? He's thinking, hold on a minute. Why, why are they, th this should be something that is applauded. And I understand them, there's detractors and all that, but give them a chance. But when a player comes out like that, who knows what happens down the line? Who knows what happens with other players down the line, Sophie? So we've got to be, sometimes we've got to be a little bit careful. And I know it's social media. So sometimes you have to take it with a, with a handful of salt, not just a pinch of salt, a handful of salt. So, can, can I go a little deeper into, Wrighty really criticised Eddie and a few people have put it up in the chat in April. I think it was April. You guys can correct me. And now he comes out in defence of him. You could say he's a hypocrite. You could also say that it doesn't matter what he said about him. If the club have made this, this decision as an ambassador of the club, he's, he's getting behind it. But I actually think, Kev, that Gabrielle and Wrighty fueled the fire. I think that it was already a blaze, but I think they made it into a bonfire. And so then you've got Arsenal key informers, you've got fans, you've got everyone weighing in on a situation that I think was like, hold on a second, a mountain out of a molehill in the sense that Arsenal fans, if we just, if we announce Tielemans or Gabriel Jesus or whatever, that will be yesterday's news. Eddie has the number 14 shirt. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So I feel like they added fuel to the fire. I don't have a problem with Gabriel as a man who stands behind him now doing that, but I do have a bit of an issue with righty doing what he did, and I think psh, he added a bit of gasoline to everything. But why do you have a problem with Wrighty? Because... Why, why, I, why do you have a problem with Wrighty and not Gabriel? Because Gabriel plays with Eddie right now. They're teammates. They're right. in the trenches together every week. They are brothers in arms. Wrighty is a legend of the club who's also an ambassador and I believe in his role. He must be paid to be an ambassador. I don't know. But I'm sure that he is. He does all the commercials for Adidas and this and that and whatever. And I I just think that as much as Wrighty loves Eddie and has supported Eddie throughout his career, this is where the Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher conversation comes in. And sometimes ex-players don't like this. You know, you're on TV. You talk about the game. Then you defend, but then you don't like being criticised either that you were ripping him in April and now you're telling fans they can't rip him in June. Do you know what I mean? Well, listen, everyone could be, everyone could be critical of anybody. But again, it's like the opinion is if something's said about somebody and I don't agree with it, be, because because you're a teammate of his and I'm not, but I'm still connected to the club. I've got every right to be able to say my piece. Well, why shouldn't I? That doesn't. Nobody has more of a right to say anything than uh, you're right. As far as I'm concerned, but he's criticizing every player, people for criticizing he, Eddie, and he criticized him. Yeah, yeah in but his so role what? As a critic. Yeah, yeah, but so what? That's the point. Like, no, don't but, point but, the finger so at Arsenal what, fans. So what? As I say, we could all be critical, but there comes a time where things go a bit too far. And I think that I think that's what happened. In a moment that was a, a should be a beautiful moment for Eddie and Ketia. Yeah, that, that's I think it was it taken away from him a little moment, bit. But it should be a beautiful moment. And, and let's be honest, fans poo-pooed it.
and the right didn't agree with it, and rightly so. Right, but okay. So my point is simply this: he's criticizing fans for criticizing Eddie, and he criticized him in April. So that's the point. It's let's not, not go same, after each. Let's not go after no, each other. No, but it's other. not the same. But it's not the same. But that wasn't a super abusive comment. That one in particular that he was responding to. It just felt like it was a moment where I understand him standing up for the club and for Eddie, but he's pointing the finger at the same thing that he did. So I just don't, you know, it's like Gary Neville saying no Manchester United person gave heart and this and in the dressing room and who, you know, whatever. And then he criticizes Xhaka for standing up and calling out his team. Sometimes these double standards, you have to be a little cognizant of them. That's all. That's all I'm I'm saying. And I love Ian and you know I love him. But for me, I just felt like that was not the mountain to die on. You know what I mean? Mm. <clears throat> right. Um, by the way, this week, we're also going to do a weed drop on our short drops that we're going to do throughout the summer. You guys will love this. It's two to three minute content. You'll really enjoy it. We have a Fabio Vieira um, two minute download from uber european football expert journalist writer broadcaster as well of bundesliga and other european games kevin hatchard Super have we Kevin. got any photos of of Vieira, by the way i i deleted them the other day because he was on the show the other day patrick or fabio fabio the calendar guy or the porto guy we just bought and <laughs> whoever which one have we got any <laughs> Why? What do you see in him? Oh, I'm just saying, you know, we're speaking about him and we tend to like put the vision I know, up sometimes. I know, so. and I did that on the Especially show. Especially a new signing, day, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, they'll see them in the uh, in the little short that we're going to put up. But I love that. Production values for Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell here. Very important. Okay, so Kev, 14 then was controversial. Why don't we do something positive and talk about 14 things in the vein of 13 things I hate about you, tonight the Highbury squad is doing 14 things I love about you. Um, I just think that... I do think modern-day players need to grow some balls. Okay? I said it out loud, Kev. I come from a generation, and there's 400-plus of you in live chat right now. Give Kev what he wants. Give me some likes. Come on, give me some likes. Very strict about this these days. He's as strict as a Greek father in the 80s. 400 means 200. Otherwise, he'll start doing this. And then he'll say, bring this out. And then, Go of course, self. you'll get Vinny. Vinny. Don't make Vinny beg. All right. So, um, you can't criticize. You can't say anything. You can't do anything. You can't, like... You know, I am – hear me out on this, okay? There are a lot of writers and journalists and broadcasters who are looking for a job on any sports network or newspaper doing stuff. I think it's really cool that ex-players are part of the broadcasting system now because it gives you a perspective of the game that you just don't get. Hence why I love talking to you about football, right? But I also feel like there's this growing narrative with a lot of ex-players being involved in broadcasting now where... You can't criticize anything. And if you do, you're a hater. If you say something, you're being, you're hurting their game or their mental or this and that. I don't see it that way, Kev. I, the sports is sports. It is high level. It is high intensity. The reason what separates you from the guy sitting on the couch or the girl sitting on the high stool, having a beer at the bar or a martini, is that you sacrifice and you put all the hours God sends into what you do, right? And when you reach a certain level, there's another machine called the media that is paid to give opinions and write pieces about. And the same in my old industry, entertainment. You make a film, people are going to 
Review that film if you want them to go see it. I know you understand the modern, but I also know that there's that old school George Graham vibe in you. Do you understand what I'm saying here in terms of we've got to be careful about mental health issues, but we also can't just enable people by not being able to say anything. I, I, I think modern modern players, that's why it's going to be interesting where people watch tomorrow um, with Callum, especially. How people understand what's part and parcel of the game. Because I think that's really important. To understand what's part and parcel of the game uh, sends them in a different different it sends them in a different direction because if you're gonna play professional football, you are gonna get criticized. If you remember, Sophie, Thierry Henry got criticized for not smiling enough at one stage by the media he's scoring goals for fun and he's like celebrating and his, his face is just like but the media turned and said he don't smile enough he's moody he's distant you can't win as a as a as a modern day footballer you can't win so therefore if you're the and this isn't to everybody you have to have a mechanism to be able to deal with crap. If you haven't got the, the mechanism to deal with crap, Sophie, mental health could really hit you. It could really, really hit you. But I, I personally think a lot of players have the, the foundation to be able to, to look after themselves and to help. Because realistically... The way social media is, you know, a lot of players, because it's game to game now. So, you know, one week you're a hero, the next week you, you're, you're crap. Yeah. You know, I, I find it interesting because kind of having done the PR in the background and the marketing and, you know, dealing with a film being absolutely slaughtered by the critics and then seeing how an actor responds to that, having worked five years on that film. You know, it's like an Olympic athlete that trains for years and then goes and pulls their hamstring in the first heat of the hurdles. It's brutal. Like being an athlete is absolutely brutal and it takes a lot. And I think also though, studying, going to school, writing, standing on the sidelines when no one cares who you are, trying to get an interview with someone, putting the mic in someone's face, traveling here, taking a coach there, taking a train here, getting on a plane there, going to that game, going to this away game, going to this home game, writing an article, trying to sell it. Da -da -da -da. All of those things, they take a lot of time and sacrifice. You, would, you could speak to a whole bunch of sports journalists and broadcasters who would tell you they spend a shit ton of time away from their families. That takes ethic and training too. And it's okay for Gary Neville to talk politics on his Twitter, but if a politician says something about football, he gets offended about it and he's like, oh, what do you know? You haven't even played the game. So I think we're at that juxtaposition, Kev, where the worlds are meeting and aligning. Globalization has created a lot of this, you know, cross-fertilization in industries and companies and brands have, you know, evoked a conversation where people feel like they can get involved at every level. Social media has given everyone their own oracle, their, their own news piece. And I feel like we're getting into that space where what can you really say and what can't you say? And Arsenal fans expressing themselves about Eddie, the abusive ones – when they're not even part of what we're talking about here, the dialogue. No, but that's that's the abusive ones and the ones that go over, they mess it up for everybody else. So whether you whether you agree or disagree, I think they're the ones who mess it up for everybody else because that's what everybody else will zero in on. 
You know, the ones mm. who say Eddie don't deserve it. He, he, he needs, you know, he, 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 I don't think he's good enough. I think he needs to da 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 as opposed to the, he's this, he's that, he's the other, blah, blah, blah. That's the one that people tend to zero in on. The, the, the more negative it is, the better for some. And unfortunately, this is where also I get kind of upset because a lot I've seen a lot of fans say, oh, the only toxic fans are the ones online, the ones that go to the stadium and the ones that go away, they're the good fans. And I'm like, no, no, no. Do you know how many millions of fans Arsenal Football Club have on, on the international sphere? They have a gazillion and they cater to them for a reason because they're very important, especially in the financial ecosystem of Arsenal Football Club. And Kev, you are right. A small toxic number makes the biggest noise and always has done. Like, is everybody abusive? No. Is no. everybody racist? No. no. Is everybody misogynistic? No. no. And I think that is the problem, which is why we need to mute more of those voices on social media, and which is why I stand up for Arsenal fans, because I meet and I know the majority of those who I stand alongside, whether it's at games or in the pub or doing a show here with you, is that they're good people and they love their club. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to get that out there because there's a lot that's bubbling. Right, here's our quick fire round. All right, you guys, let us know what you think as well. I know that you guys have put in a lot about other people that talk about Arsenal and stuff like that. We're not involved in that game. We don't get involved in that game. All we know is what we've done here on this show and how we tackle things. We always have an authentic conversation and sometimes we agree and disagree. And you know what? There's a long way to go in this summer transfer window. The sky isn't falling yet. And I asked the question in the description. When we get to the end of the transfer window, if we're here and we've signed one player, the Kev has always said we're going to find out about these owners in this window. Nothing more, nothing less. So did you did you see what the CBS interview with Josh Cronkey? As part of from the uh, Stanley Cup, that one. What, or... what he said. What, what he said. The budget, Arsenal's budget this summer is going to be two hundred plus. That one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can't be. We don't want to be at the end of the window only signing one player. So if if <clears throat> if we we've got that sort of money, let's be transfers. honest, Super Kev. Can I ask you this? Does signing Vieira and Kevin Hatchard's going to dip into this too? but I want you to have your say as well. Does signing Vieira mean there's no room for, you know, everyone's saying, well, if if Eddie's been offered this, are we really going to sign Gabriel? If we've signed Vieira, why are we going to get Tielemans? If we do X, ex- well, you've always said eight players go hard, Listen, build a squad. Tielemans is still on the table. Jesus is still on the table. We need a squad, Soph. You know, the way we finished last season told us everything, didn't it, about having a squad. Because if you get injuries, you've got to be able to get players in who could do the job. Not players who you're going to think, can they handle the pressure? No, you need a squad. So that still rang true. So that's what we need. And that's what we've got, got to go and get. Regardless, if we'd have got Champions League... Great. We didn't, but still the problem is still there and it's still something that needs to be addressed. And it needs to be addressed this window. This is the part that I really like, Kev, about Arteta's apprenticeship at Manchester City. Because if you look at the players that have been mentioned and you look at the players from really good sources, you know, um, you, you could say he's going the Manchester City way, right? Yeah. Like, you know, if M- Mares can't play, X comes in. Yeah. If Gundogan is injured, X comes in. If interchangeable, De Bruyne is in, interchangeable that, pieces. Yeah. Wing backs to centre backs. That's the part that I like that I see. And hasn't it always been a beef with all of us, Kev? There's not enough competition in this team. You don't expect that you start every game every week 
for the Arsenal. Isn't this part, I, I like this part that I see in what Arteta's vision is. Am I being too hopeful or? No, no, you're not being too hopeful. The key is getting the players over the line. So that's the key. You've got to get the players over the line to make us a lot stronger. And you're, you're adding players who can make a difference. That's that's the key. Do, Kev, do you think, um, yes, there are 460 of you in live chat. So Tammy needs a few more bits. Um, hit that like button. Kev, do you think that there's a... Are you afraid of what other teams can offer? No. No. Sophie, let me tell you this. Look at all the players we're getting linked with. We're getting linked with everybody. But there are certain ones, like a Rafinha, Jesus, these guys will make us better, right? Tielemans will make us better. You had those those three, Lissandro, Martinez uh, as well. You had, you had those four. What type of window would you say we've had, so? Exceptional. Um, Kev, do you rate um, Rafinha? Do you rate I do. him? I do. I do. I do rate him. Uh, I think he's a... You could you could tell by the type of teams that are in, in for him or interested in taking him. So, you know, there was rumours Liverpool, rumours Bayern Barcelona. Munich. Big rumours on Barcelona. But Barcelona were hoping that they went down so they could get him for a cup price. Obviously, the price will be a lot more um, uh, as, as, as stayed up there now. So I don't think Barca can afford him. Now, wouldn't it be a great move for Arsenal to go in and grab him? All those are Champions League sides. Yeah, if we can go in and get him, so that tells you our ambition. You know, we, we keep hearing about we can't attract this player, we can't attract that player, and Champions League is going to make a real difference. You know, the key is if we if we sign those four players, you know, it really makes a massive difference to our squad, I believe. What do you say to fans who say if we sign him, um it limits does it does it stifle Mill Mil Smith Road? Does he need to play more on the the right? Is he a backup for is he a replacement for for Pepe? What what do you say to well, Pepe? Pepe won't even be there, right? But no, that's what I'm saying. Like, so if Saka's injured, or can he play both sides? What do you because there's Saka a lot could of fans... play both sides. R Rafinha could play both sides, but his natural side is is it not on that right side, Kev? No, they that, they they prefer playing there, but don't forget Saka could play equally just as well on the left. Which and a lot of Arsenal fans have wanted him to, but this fella here, do you think he disrupts the growth of the players that we've kind of lauded and, and talked about? I don't. Sophie, do we want to win or do we want to be sentimental? That's that's the way it breaks down. We need a squad. We need a squad to compete and we need quality players in that squad. Now, the fact of the matter is, Sophie, this happens at every big club who wins. You've got a first 11 and you've got hungry players behind it. You get injured, Sophie, and somebody else comes in your spot and you don't see that spot for a time. That's, that's, that's big club mentality because you've got players just as good who can come in and do a job so you make sure you've got to play well. And yeah, the manager is allowed to rotate. And which has been a big beef of yours and many others is when we go into the FA Cup and we don't play our main players, we're weak source. Well, that's got to be a thing of the past, Sophie, because we have to be challenging on at, for every trophy. Maybe not win it, but we've got to be challenging for every trophy. Which Signing's more important, the fella I had just put up on the screen or this, or do you just want to see both? 500 of you in live chat let us know the same thing as well. Which, I would, I would say Tielemans. 
I would say Tielemans solely because so somebody from the middle of the pitch who can pick a pass, who can score goals, who can unlock a defence. You know, Rafinha is a very good player, don't get me wrong. But I think if we didn't if we didn't get him, we know Saka. Saka's, uh, listen, he's been player of the season for two seasons in a row. And realistically, he's only just starting to get some help. So he's going to get better. But I think that centre of the pitch, we've lacked. We've lacked that creativity. We've lacked goals. We've lacked guile. We've lacked a bit of quality in the centre of the pitch to open teams up. So, And uh, for me, I think Tielemans is a, is a key, although that might not be done before some of the others, I think. That might be one of the last. And do you think that's more to do with Leicester's push for more money, knowing now how much Arsenal really want him, Kev? Yeah, I think it's I think it's down to Leicester. Again, you know, we we've spoken about opposition. You might want the player, but it's the club who say, you know, well, we're, well we want fifty million, or we want this, we want that. Um, it's Again, this it might need the player to go in and speak to them and all kinds of different things to go on. So, so listen, okay. again, that's why I believe Tielemans won't be... If this deal's going to get done, it won't be done in a week. It'll be a bit further down the line. Okay, there's a lot of messages coming in for this guy. And again, I have to say, Kev, I try not to get swooped into... Um, I watch, uh, as you know, I watch a lot of European football. I have to say, the the compilation I've seen of passes from this guy kind of reminds me of Alonso. You know, you know, every now and again, okay, don't kill me, guys, but there, every now and again, Ben White will make a pass and it's sweeping, right? And Santa used to have short sweeping passes too, like. We haven't had a sweeping pass player that can just, I, I don't know, Kev, I don't want to get caught up in the highlights. No, you're, what you're talking about, you want to, who can open up the pitch. That's and what he, you're talking and about. And he seems to do that. And regular. Does regular. it regularly. Regularly. So how does he, What what's your take if I add him into the mix with the other players that we've been talking about? Well, he, he's one of the ultimate you know, back in the day, so when you used to have a, a bike and you used to have a box banner and it had all the different, all the different like <laughs> screw heads and, and, and bolt head on either side. He's a gadget player. So he's a player wherever you needed, you know, Tierney's not fit. He can fill in there. You know, he can go in left center half. He can play as a play as a part of a three. He can even do a stint in midfield. He can play wing back. You've got someone who is good everywhere and is tough. He's aggressive, but his technique is excellent. So there ain't many of them around. There ain't many of the like of this guy around. And Sophie, you get somebody like him for 30 million quid. I tell you, that's that's good money. That's 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 good business. I mean, good am business. I am I wrong to be like in the basket of Martinez? I would like to put my eggs in that basket, please. I would like Jesus uh, up front, and if you can get a Tielemans for me, and then a really cheap cover at left back like a Hickey. If you got two hundred million plus, Josh. Now we're talking about a healthy transfer window. 521 of you in live chat right now. Hit that like button for us, please. This fine Monday madness with Super Kev here. Super Kev, I I love what you're saying. And I I didn't that's why I didn't want to make myself look like a fool, but I really love his style. I love the I, I love the the thinking of where the club's going. And hey, you you won't need a cover at left back because he could play left back. Martinez. True. Yeah. So he can play any one of that left side midfield, that that triangle or square, 
He can fit in anywhere around there. Sorry, Viking football show, by the way, those Vikings, how have they done recently? Um, <coughs> why are Man City so happy to sell Arsenal their players? If City sell Raheem Sterling to Chelsea, let's see what people say about that. These aren't players that are ready for the dumpster. They are players that have so much to offer. And even they realize in a team that is so competitive and, and functions in all competitions <coughs> that you're not going to get that type of playing time, Kev. Mm. And, you know, Sterling is looking maybe to move on. Zinchenko, great player as well. Jesus, really good player. There's question marks over Mares. Who wouldn't take Mares still at, mm. with, with, with where he's at? So... I think that's a bit harsh in terms of trying to insinuate we're going after sloppy seconds. Well, it's not so much. It's the age. It's the age. You look at the age. Jesus is what? 24, 25? He's not even at his peak yet. So, Bargain. And, he's, and he's, he's not been the main man yet. He, he starts for Brazil. That, that should tell you everything. Is that number nine you were talking about, Kev? Exactly. <laughs> that number nine. All right, so look, we're going to get um, out on this quick fire round. It's been a great conversation, an honest one between player and fan about all things from transfers to the dialogue around transfers to where we're at as a club, how we're moving forward, and the sky isn't falling yet because the transfer window is not closed. Keep your heads together, everybody, and always be sure to tune into the Highbury squad for some mellow conversation, although Super Kevin and I will go supersonic sometimes <coughs> right this might be one of those kev are you feeling all right over there yeah you got you yeah got i'm dry. good um, yeah okay. yeah i got a dry just that it's just that um 14 conversation made me me throat dry <laughs> i'm still picturing some of your left footed volleys kev i mean seriously there's a compilation for us to do one day all right 520 view in live chat well done tammy and guna russ and everybody in the chat room uh, for getting it up, Mark, and the usual suspects. Kev, seven things we love about the Arsenal. 14 things went and drove them crazy. So we're doing 14 things that we love, seven each. Where do you want to start? Well, we'll start number one. <laughs> I'll go first. Or do you want to go first? Ladies You're the before. legend. You go, no, legends before plebs. All right. Oh, yeah. Come off it. So, well, I better go second then. <laughs> no freaking way. So, Sophie, number one for me is history. Ah, oh, yes. And I know some of the times we, we're going to cross on certain things. We are. This one we do. Number one, history. But number one is history. You tell me. us why. You can take this one. Well, well, our, well, obviously our history, where we come from, how everything's worked out. And in the history, Highbury is in that history, so prominent in that history. And because the teams we've built, the success we've had as a football club, the way we are as a football club, the badge, the cannon, just the way the club has been run, the enjoyment, of connection. We, we've got such a profound history and we've got such a deep history. There ain't many clubs in the world who could compete. Many, many are, are Johnny come lately because they've got money so. But if we go back and we look at history, bang, 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 hardly any, uh, unless you're the, the really big boys, Hardly anybody could compete. So history, number one. History's on mine too, Kev, number one. History, we're on the same wavelength there. And I'm not even going to add because you just put it beautifully. Absolutely. I think Manchester United, Liverpool and Arsenal have the deepest, most precious history. And I think Chelsea and Manchester um, City have made new history. Um, jo Johnny a... come lately, but that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Good, that's all good right. luck to them. Yeah, good yeah. luck to them. Totally. What's number two, Kev? That's for you. You're number two now. Okay, number two for me 
is London. It's a great city. It's a great part of the world. And Arsenal have a piece of that history. It's my hometown. Makes me feel nostalgic. I love it. There's a rivalry. Is it West London, East London, North London? Is it white? Is it red? But London, for me, is the ep- one of the epicenters of the world. And for my club to be from this wonderful city that I grew up in, it means a lot. And there's a lot of history there against a lot of other London clubs and Northern clubs that have come down to fight us. But for me, I think London is so important. And even if you were a Midlands boy or a Northern boy, and I'm sure Kev, you played with them when they come down to London at first, it's like, Oh, you Southern fairies and this and that, but everyone falls in love with London. Eventually London, London. Well, Sophie, because of my commitment, I haven't got time to do to, or going to be finishing them all. Number two for me was youth. The way Arsenal have developed youth over the years and they're still developing youth. And now we're starting to get a, a, a feeling that these youngsters are going to really help make a difference in, in what we do. So... I was part of the youth uh, set up. I had my peers, obviously the ro- likes of Rocky and Mickey Thomas, Tony Adams and all that, and then Paul Davis, with John Mercer. There was so much youth coming through, you know, really made you feel part of the football club. And now obviously Hayland, you know, beautiful photos, successful photos as well, so. I think that's the really important part. So successful with people who you grew up with, you came through with. It, it Nothing beats that. I tell you, nothing beats that. People going about the class of 92, uh, respect to them at Man United, but you look at all the players who came through that Arsenal. It's incredible. I'm with you, Kev, and we'll get out, we'll get these out because I know you and I both have to jet. I spent a lot of time talking about a lot of other stuff, but that is the most important. We've got youth, we've got London, we've got history. What else is there for you? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through from three to seven, right? Do it, yeah. Number three was appeal. The appeal of Arsenal. Mm. People have questioned it. People have... But yeah, not not quite the same club because you're not winning. Players still come to Arsenal. That's for sure. Number four was the players. Iconic, great players over over the years. Even times where we weren't so good. So there were still iconic players in the football club that kept the football club quite relevant. Number five is iconic team, Sophie. Look at those iconic teams that we've had that we can celebrate year in, year out. You know, the, what the teams at 89 and the, the, the double winning team and the one defeat before Invincible and then the Invincibles and then you got double winning teams and all. So we're blessed. As a fan base, we're blessed. Number six might surprise a few, but it's the fan base, Sophie. I still love the fan base. The fan base, Arsenal fan base, and don't let anybody tell you any different. The Arsenal fan base is absolutely the best. Tremendous fan base. And remember, they've been used to dining at the Ritz. And we've been having to deal with Wimpy. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? And the fans have been, they don't like it because we, listen, we're winners, so we, we want to be successful. Of course we do. We don't, li- we don't like being second best or third best or fourth best or wallowing in mid-table. We don't want that. That's why there's been some craziness. But the fan base is still brilliant. You saw how the fans got together with this team last season. And Arsenal, you make them signings. 
You make them signings. Let's push this team forward to challenge for everything. May not win, but to challenge. Last but not least, Sophie, number seven is winners and trophies. Because when you look at Arsenal, when you look at that name, you look at that badge, that is connected to winners and winning teams and winning players. That's what that is connected to. You could look at other teams, Chris, and no, it's not about winning. It's a good club. Arsenal is about winning and winning trophies. Yeah, we've been in the wilderness a little bit, Sophie, but you know what? I truly believe we're resetting ourselves. We've turned the ship round and we're starting to go in the right direction. This transfer window is the key. We get this one right and we're going to be fine. I truly believe that. So that's that's my seven, Sophie. I'm not going to add one more thing. It was poetic. <laughs> you're, doubling up, you're doubling up on me. You're doubling and it up. was it was beautiful. You hit all the points. And at the end of the day, you know, you belong to something. Versace and Gucci and all these brands went through. <laughs> Manchester United. <laughs> Barcelona. <laughs> Arsenal Football Club. <laughs> you put it beautifully, Kev. That's all I have. We're going to leave it there. You take us out. Squaddies, thanks for listening and thanks for joining us on the Monday Madness. I hope you all have a happy Monday. And remember, tell your loved ones you love them. Don't put it off. Got to say, Sophie, thank you for, for sorting all this out on a, a, a Monday Madness and for dealing with an issue that was proving to be quite difficult in the Arsenal sphere. It was. So I'm, I'm pleased we dealt with it. I mean, I'm pleased we looked after it, Soph. And, um, and we turned it into a positive come the end. I think so. And our women's yeah. team, always something to be super positive about. Uh, of we course. love our women's team. Of 100%. course, of course, of course. So on that note, Sophie, squaddies, we love you. Take good care. And at ease, squaddies, at ease. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>